Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Banished and welcome back to soon to be Gothenburg. <laughs> uh, I did some stuff since I last saw you. Um, I started to build in this direction, like adding some normal houses and I also added a blacksmith because my tools was running really low last time. Uh, so I added that and I have a blacksmith. He's been working his ass off so I got 300 stored tools now. I mean I have more than I actually need but I tend to, you know, produce more than I need, because those goods are very good to use in trading. <laughs> I built a trading post, which is basically mandatory if you want seeds and when you're playing hard. So there we go, it just finished. And for order to a guy to come here to trade with, I need to make sure that I have at least one trader in the trading post working. And the more you have, the more frequently the trader will arrive with the goods and I mean he can come he comes with random stuff uh, but there's like different types of traders some of them have food stuff some of them have um, cattle some of them have seeds some of them have clothing or whatever so they come with random shit but uh, so you kind of get lucky like uh, if you want a specific thing you kind of have to wait and get lucky until a trader comes with that thing but also when a trader comes and he doesn't have this specific thing, you can also order him that next time when he comes, he will have it. I love this song. It's so atmospheric. Whatever, uh, and I also built a hunting cabin. I don't think I had that in the previous episode. Um, to increase my food production a little bit. I mean, I have over 2,000 stored food, so I, am, I, I have enough food. Uh, so people don't die. Uh, so that's good. But then again, I always like to overproduce. Because you never know when something happens and a bunch of people die. And it's good to have like stored food. Because what if my farmers die? What the hell do I do then? Then I need to have stored food. Uh, and then I can replace the farmers eventually. So I always overproduce. So I always build a bunch of storage barn. You see, this one is almost full. So I, I started building another one right away. And you see, I built some more houses. And... Oh my god, look at the amount of firewood I have. <laughs> 1,500 firewood. But firewood also a very good thing to trade with, uh, in my opinion. Because some some stuff are worth more than others. For example, iron tools and firewood are worth more than, say, onions. Because they are actually produced goods. Onions are raw material. The firewood and iron tools are something I have produced myself. Uh, and that's, you know, considered more valuable in this game. Which is pretty cool. Alright, and I also started removing this. I ordered people to re remove this, so they will, you know, they will eventually pleat this thing and put everything over here, so I don't need to care about this side anymore. So yeah, I'm gonna slowly start to build upwards uh, here. So I'm not gonna build anything down here, except these things. I should start a mine eventually, like here, because mines are um, a reliable source of uh, iron or coal. Which could be used to fuel homes, but also you to make uh, steel tools and other stuff. So coal is definitely something I should get later on. And you need to build a mine. There it is. But a mine can unfortunately only be built on slopes. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. There's a suitable I guess, for a mine, for example. But that's a pretty like mid-game thing. Not something you should do right now. Because I really don't have the workforce to in mine right now. I mean, I think 12 people could work in a mine. So, I mean, the mine is a very good... Uh, like, it creates a, a lot of jobs for people. If you have a lot of labors and not just doing anything. I also lay down the foundation of a rural market. Uh, the, the markets basically act like storage barns. Uh, where people can, like, put goods. And then people can come to the market and pick up goods... Uh, put in their homes like firewood and food or whatever clothes and so they, they, they basically act as storage but also a, a read redistributor of goods to the people kind of and they have like a area of affecting around them I'll show you Let's see rural you see so people in this orange circle uh, circle will go to the that rural market and get the goods and then we also have a central market which has a much larger radius and I will definitely put that up here Dun, 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 in this area. So yeah, and there's some other stuff that I haven't really looked into. 
Yeah, there's a trading post I built over here. But there's like, there's a bank barn, which basically is a normal barn, but it can hold a shit ton of more stuff. But it has to be built on a hill too. Let's see, so here could I potentially build one. But they require eight, uh, what are those called, grids or something? Like yeah, iron metal grading. Uh, and I cannot produce those yet. I need a specific resource for that. I also need to upgrade my blacksmith to be able to do that. So yeah. Then you have like dry storage uh, for clothes and shit. I mean, you have a grain silo, which is pretty cool. But unfortunately, I don't have any uh, wheat or anything yet. And we got a root cellar or whatever. So yeah. That's all from the Colonial Shorter mod. In the original game, you only had like a market, a storage barn, and these stockpiles. That's all you had, I think. So yeah. This town is getting pretty... pretty lively. I got 16 adults, 10 children at the moment. No students. I need to build a school to get students. I think I might do that right now, because... Uh, there's, there's education system in this game. Uh, you see, if you look at a citizen, it says educated, no, or yes. The people you start with, they are educated. But when they produce kid, <laughs> produce... <laughs> when they when they have kids, they will be uneducated if you don't have a school. So, and uneducated people work, uh, not less, but they work more inefficiently than educated people. So if you want to make the most out of your people, you should definitely have a school. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can spare a laborer to be a teacher, but I guess I can, so let's do that. And as I said in my first episode of this, I added a library and a college. Uh, and the college is basically a school, but it can house more students and I think more teachers. So there's no like second tier of education in this game. I mean, this isn't like SimCity or whatever, uh, but it's just a bigger school. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fine with the normal school for now. So let's just put it here. Yeah, alright, good. <laughs> so I'm basically just waiting for a trader to come. Or a merchant. It will come down this river eventually. And we'll see what he brings. Oh shit, I think I, I haven't, I haven't... Oh, I haven't ordered any stuff to be in here. Okay, what should I trade? So basically, in the in the trading post, you you put on or you you put what kind of resources you want to be here all the time. For example, I have one thousand seven hundred firewood, so I can potentially just put a thousand firewood in here that I can use to trade with. And I got three hundred tools, so let's just put two hundred tools in here to trade with. Whenever a merchant comes. Fuck, I forgot about that. <laughs> Maybe that's why a merchant haven't arrived yet. So yeah, now the people working as a trader will take the resources from town to here. And store them here. In a trading post. And, you know, just wait, uh, wait for a trader to arrive. Or a merchant, sorry. So yeah, sweet speed. Maybe I should get a tailor up, because so I'm running out of clothes, or I have no clothes left. You remember you started with a little bit of clothes, but they're all they're all torn out now. So people don't have any clothes. Well, they technically have clothes, they're not naked, but they don't have, like, you know, good clothes. Because if you click on one, it says, clothing ragged. That means that's, that's like the lowest form of clothing you can have in the game. Like, they are definitely clothed, you can see that, they're not naked, but it's not as efficient. So in the winter... They will freeze uh, pretty quickly when they're outside working. But if they have clothes, uh, clothes on, different type of clothing, they are able to stay outside in the winter much longer. And also in the spring and autumn or whatever. Which, uh, you know, makes your workers more efficient. So maybe I should invest in a tailor. Then again, I don't really have the people for it. Either these kids have to grow up, or I need to put down more houses. But I'm afraid if I put down more houses, I won't have enough food to supply them all with food. I think I have. I could just build another fishing dock, so I have two. Maybe. Whoops! I ordered five people to work here. Can only hold four. 
yeah, okay, whatever. Let's put um let's put down some more houses and another fishing dog. And as I said, I'm gonna start building upwards. <laughs> I'm gonna slowly building upwards. Because I already built a road here. But I will slowly, you know, start to build upwards. But yeah, fishing dog was it. Bada. Let's see. Wait. I think there's no point of building it this close, because you see the fishing dogs actually has like a orange catchment area circle too. Which means that they will catch fish in that area. And if I put one here, they will basically be in the same catchment area. So that's pretty unnecessary. So let's put one over here instead. Mmm. Mmm, come on. Fuck, I hate these like diagonal shores. It's very hard to oh. I could put one here potentially. Yeah, let's do that. Alright. I could put some houses here. So the fishermen and trader have closer to work. I might do that. But the thing is, a hunting cabin is something you should put away from your town, kind of. Uh, like, it should be in the forest, kind of. Because if it's too close to uh, your main village, uh, it will be far away from the deers. Because the deers tend to not be close to the village. Which is pretty cool. Or I think... Yeah, I think it's like that. I think I read about it. And back in the day when this game was supposed to be released, uh, I read something that that was the mechanic of the hunting cabin. But to be honest, I've seen reindeers like uh, or deers like standing over here. <laughs> so I, I don't know if it actually works. Or whatever. Hmm. School is done, so let's assign one teacher. So now these ungrateful fucking brats will start to go to school instead of just you know doing nothing. Yeah, we got one student already. Awesome. Anyway, here are some deers I talked about. Pretty cool. Are you sitting in the forest, chilling out, waiting to be killed by my hunter? I think I only have one hunter. Yeah, I can assign another one. And one thing I find is really cool is that you can click on the building and see how much it produces this season and current, uh, uh, like this season and the previous season. Kind of like that. Makes you keep track of how efficient your building is. For example, this. Gathering hut. Let's see, it's winter now, so it's basically the end of the season. And you can see there's not much different between the seasons, so... Yeah, it's, it's doing good. I only have one forester. I like how the forester lodge is producing stone and iron. <laughs> Doesn't really make any sense, but... Well, I guess the forester, you know, clears stone or whatever too. I don't know. Whatever. I really want the merchant to arrive. God damn it. Okay, so now I have the desired amount of stuff in here, which is good. And you can see my firewood and uh, tools uh, is a lot lower now than it was before. So we have enough or very much of one resource. Just trade it for something else. I mean, there's no point of the resource just sitting there, not being used to anything. Come on, where, eh, where is this fucking asshole? Or maybe it's coming from south. Maybe it's coming from down here. I don't know, actually. Oh well, I guess we'll just wait and see. I mean, it, it is pretty random when it comes and when it doesn't come. And the more traders you have, the more likely it is to come. So maybe I'll increase the number of traders. Two, three? Three out of six. I really like these maple trees they added in the Colonial Shotter mod. That wasn't in the original game. <laughs> Look pretty cool. Very, very reddish in color. Come on, where are you, bitch? Hmm? Where's... what? The required materials... For, what? Oh, I'm out of... I'm out of wood. Let's just clear this forest. <laughs> Yep, I'm out of wood. Look at that. Zero wood. Or logs. That's not good. Yeah, so a blacksmith requires wood and iron to create tools. Makes sense. This fishing dog isn't really producing as much as I thought. Because the, the fishing dogs are pretty weird. Sometimes they produce like very little like this. And sometimes I've seen fishing dogs produce like 5,000 fish. So like, okay, what? 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 Why? Like, <laughs> I guess it has something to do with the amount of water in the catchment area. But I swear to God, I have put fishing dicks, uh, fish, 
fishing dicks, fishing docks <laughs> on a giant river like this, and they produce like 5,000 fish. So I don't know why th these guys doesn't do anything. Lazy fucks. Okay, so I got another one over here. Maybe this one reproduce more. We'll see. Oh, fucking traitor. Maybe I can increase my population a little bit. Put on the little house. Man, this area is very, very tight. Well, I like it. It's cozy. It's cozy. Blacksmith is working his ass off as always. A 47 year old guy named Roniel. He's educated. So he's one of the first people that I have in the beginning that didn't die from starvation. <laughs> Wait, I wonder what that girl is that survived the first winter. What's her name again? There she is. Yo, 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 Sully. Man, she's awesome. Where is she? She's a gatherer. Oh, what? What happened to her? There she is. Whoops, no, I wanna... Yeah, there she is. Man, she's not happy. What the fuck? <laughs> and she doesn't really feel good either. That's not good. Well, she's 40 years old, and I mean, at this time of it, uh, I mean, yeah, at this time of age, like, people didn't really live that long, so... I can see her probably dying soon. Man, this woman was really something. Look at her. Just walking there with her tools. What are you up to? Yeah, whatever. Merchant, please. That's kind of what I want. Been waiting for this entire episode. Hmm. So people haven't had sex lately. I mean, my population is not really going up. Hmm. Maybe I should spy. Oh, a trip! Oh, look at that! Oh, he's coming! Oh, row, row, row you both! Da 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 da! Ba -ba -da, -ba -da, -ba -da, -ba -da -ba -da Suck my holy dick! Here he is! Awesome! Let's see what he brings. Hopefully, it's some seeds or like cattle or something. Because once you get that, you 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 basically won the game. Yes. So when he arrives, you're going to. Fuck. <laughs> Tobacco leaf and ink. Damn it. Whatever. So when he arrives, uh, you go to the trade menu, and this is what he has. And this is what I, you know, have, because this is what I put in. I don't know what to do with ink, but I, I think ink is from the fountain mod. It's not from the colonial shot mod. Whatever, let's take some tobacco leaf. I don't know if my people can smoke it. Uh, or if they need, like, an inn or something to be able to smoke them. But whatever, let's take them for now. <laughs> I mean, I have fire with despair, so... I need one more unit. Ah, I'm overpaying by three, but whatever. But then if you go to orders, you can like order. So next time this guy arrives, he hopefully will have what I order. So let's see, what do I want? Uh, wait, what do you need to make ropes? Hemp is what you need to make ropes, I think. Uh, paper, I don't know what to do with that. Leather, huh? Silk cocoons. I think that's used to make like silkworms, so you can make silk. It makes clothes. Cloth. Bee wax. Flax. Yeah, whatever. Let's let's order that. Well, thanks for the tobacco. I don't know if my tool can smoke it. I think I need an, um, an inn and garden. A public inn and garden is a place where people congregate as social merits of all types. It's a primary store to look for alcohol and smoking products. Yeah, I need one of these. Uh, wait, can I actually build it? I can't actually build it. I have the resources. Should I make it? <laughs> should I make a like a bar? It's not like a bar, but it's like a. It's pretty weird because like in the original game, you had a you had a brewery. That, that's all you had. And that and that's the place where they they brew you know ale or whatever. And that's also where you you know drank it. But in this game. You brew it here, but then you go here to drink it. So this is kind of like the bar or, you know, the tavern or whatever. And the tavern, or no, or the brewery is actually where you brew it. And then there's the winery, produces wine, of course. The distillery produces, you know, alcohol <laughs> used for drinking and maybe some other stuff. I can't remember. 
Uh, but as you can see, I, I require bricks and ropes to be able to build it. So that's a pretty late game thing. And then we have the curing barn, where tobacco is air cured into pipe tobacco for smoking. Finished product. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe I should build one of these. Because this is, I think, what I need to make the tobacco leaves into actually smokable tobacco. But nah, whatever. I mean, the leaves will just be stored here, I think. Or here, for now. Until I can do anything with it. So I might as well just keep them for now. And hopefully they will not rot. But okay, that's what I wanted in this episode. The first trade. Uh, but I'm gonna keep going a little bit off screen again and expand my city upwards And I'm gonna wait for traders hopefully get some seeds and once I get some seeds for farming. I will uh, Do another episode about that. So uh, Yeah, leave a comment if you like this and uh, leave a comment if you dislike it <laughs> and tell me what you don't like and tell me to kill yourself uh, Kill myself or whatever, but also leave a comment if you have a suggestion on what to do or whatever but obviously I will follow, you know, this blueprint <laughs> of how the city will look eventually, so I will not, you know, do anything different than this. But if you have a suggestion on, you know, what to build next or something, just uh, leave a comment. But the walls or anything, well, that's... I, I'm gonna have to save that for late game, because... Let's see, the walls are really expensive to build. Uh, let's see, to build a... Like a four tile wide wall, that's 15 stone and 30, uh, 15 wood and 30 stone. That's actually a lot of stone. And imagine how many of these pieces I will have to build to be able to, you know, surround the entire town. So, yep, that's gonna be a late game thing. Anyway, enough talking. I will see you in the next episode. Take care, bye bye.